In this question, we are given a parabola, and they've given us the equation, and a straight line, and we have the turning point, which is m. The first question says, calculate the coordinates of a, b, and c. Now guys, for five marks, that is easy, because a and b, those are x-intercepts. So to find the x-intercepts of that graph, you just make y equal to zero. And to find the y-intercept, I mean the x-intercepts, you make y zero. So we say zero equals to 2x squared minus 4x minus 6. Now you could use the quadratic formula. Um, you can divide everything by 2, which is what I'm going to do. And this one would actually factorize quite nicely. x minus 3, x plus 1. And so therefore x would be equal to 3 or x would be equal to negative 1. So that means that a is the negative 1 and b is the 3. So let's write those coordinates here. A would be negative 1 and 0. B would be 3 and 0. To find C, you make x equal to 0. So we can say y equals 2, and then you make x equal to 0. And that's going to give us an answer of negative 6. And so the coordinates of C will be 0 for, for, for x and minus 6 for y. 6.1.2 says calculate the coordinates of the turning point. So when they give you an equation like this, remember that to find the turning point, you just use x equals to minus b over 2a. Uh, if you ever forget that, just remember the quadratic formula, which will be given to you in um, your exams. It's this part over here. See it there? Minus b over 2a. So we go fill that in now as um, so b is minus 4 so we say minus minus 4 over 2 times a which is 2 and if you had to go work this out you're going to get a value of 1 but now that's the x value so some students they struggle to find the y value to find the y value you just take that x value and plug it into the equation of the parabola and so that will be f of 1 equals to 2 1 so wherever i see a x i'm just plugging in a 1 now and that's going to be 2 minus 4 minus 6, which is negative 8. And so the final answer would be 1 and negative 8. That'll be the turning point. Question 6.1.3. If both graphs intersected B and D, determine the coordinates of D. Okay, so to find the place where two graphs go into each other, you make these two equations equal to each other. So you're going to end up with 2x squared minus 4x minus 6 equals to minus 2x plus 6. You then take everything to the one side, because we can see that it's probably going to end up being something like a trinomial. And then you just simplify, so you put all the x's together and all the numbers together. I'm going to divide by 2. There we go, and now I can factorize. So it'll be x minus 3 and x plus 2. You can also use the quadratic formula if you want to. And so x will be equal to 3 or x will be equal to minus 2. So d, they want d. That would be the negative one. So that would be negative 2. But now, guys, you need to know its y value as well. So because that point is on the straight line and it's also on the parabola, you can plug the minus 2 into any one of those equations to find the y. I'm going to choose the easiest one, which is the straight line. So I plug minus 2 into the place of x. And that's going to give me 4 plus 6, which is 10. And so d would be minus 2 and 10. And then 6.1.4, use the graph to solve the inequality. f of x multiplied by g of x is smaller than 0. So let me help you to understand this. They're wanting you to multiply two things together, and you must get a negative answer. Because isn't that what smaller than 0 means? Anything that's smaller than 0 is negative. So here's my question. How can you multiply two things together and get a negative? Well, either this one must be a positive and this one must be a negative, or this one must be a negative and this one must be a positive, right? So we need to go find places. So let's try look for this one first. Are there any places on the graph? And you might have to pause the video now and just think about this carefully. Are there any places on the graph where f of x is a positive and g of x is a negative? So what we'll do, let's go highlight all the places where f of x is positive. That means above the x-axis. So that's here and here. 
Now let's go find all the places where g of x is a negative. That will only be here. So is there a place where this one is positive and this one is negative? Yes, it's this area here. And so that will be our first answer, this section here. And so if I zoom in a bit, we know that it's this area here because this one is negative and this one is positive. And so it will say x must be anything that is bigger than whatever the x value is at b. So it will be from b to the right. Now if you guys can remember, we did find b already. We found that earlier. We said that the coordinates at b was 3 and 0. So we can say that um, x must be bigger than 3 or now we need to go find if, see if there's any other areas. So now we erase all of that. And now we're going to go look for any places where f of x is a negative. Where is f of x negative? Okay, it's negative here. Now that, that means that it's under the graph. And then at the same time, we also want g of x to be a positive. So g of x is positive here. So where, so if I zoom in a bit, where are they both negative and positive at the same time? So where is the green one negative and the blue one positive? Well, it would be up to here. And here so all of this area in between the green one is negative and the blue one is a positive and then we stop here why do we stop there because after that point this green one is about to become a positive again and we don't want that so it's everything between B and a so for that one you would say that X must be anything between B and a so X must be bigger than a's value which is minus 1 but smaller than B's value so the final answer is the following x can be bigger than minus 1, but smaller than 3, so that takes care of this section, or x can be bigger than 3. Some of you might be thinking, Kevin, can't we just include the number 3? No, we can't, because at the number 3, they both are 0, so this, wouldn't, this, this part here wouldn't make any sense. So we mustn't include 3. Now, if you are a student who prefers interval notation, you would say x is an element from minus 1 to 3, or 3 up to infinity. Now when they talk about, for 6.1.5, when they talk about increasing and decreasing, that is where we draw a roller coaster. And we always go from left to right. Always imagine your roller coaster going from left to right. So let's draw ourselves a roller coaster with wheels. There we go. Now where is the roller coaster going downhill? If it's going, it must always go from left to right, hey? so it must go like this. So where is it going downhill? It's going downhill here. And then where is it going uphill? Over here. So what does increasing mean? Increasing means you are going uphill. So it's going uphill for this section over here. But they want you to use x values. So it will be from point M onwards. Okay, because those are the x values. From point M onwards. And so M had an x value of 1. Remember that? And so we can say that x must be bigger than 1. You don't want to say equal to 1 because the roller coaster is not increasing there. And they said strictly increasing. If you prefer interval notation, you would say from 1 to infinity. Last question, 6.2. With reference to the above graph, calculate the average gradient between B and D. Um, okay, so between points B and D. So this whole word average gradient confuses students, but it mustn't guys, because gradient is just y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Now technically, this is for a straight line, but if they ever ask you to do it between b and d, um, I mean, even though this is a straight line, here they said of f, but they didn't need to say that because yeah, it doesn't really matter. Um, so it's actually quite a weird question because if you guys think about this carefully, oh, let me first not go um, on another path here. Let me explain to you guys. When they ask you to work out the average gradient, you are still going to use this formula, okay? Nothing changes. Now, this is a bit of a, a weird question because not weird as in difficult, just quite easy to be honest because this is a straight line and we know that this line has a gradient of minus 2. So surely the answer is minus 2. But anyways, let's, for three marks, I guess, I think that was a bit of a mistake, to be honest. I don't think the teachers who set this up realized that it was, that made it that easy. But that's, that's okay. So for three marks, what might have happened 
um, because technically you could just say that it's negative 2 because it's the straight line. But let's say the straight line wasn't there. Let's say the straight line is not there and we only have D and B um, on the parabola. Um, and that's what the teachers were trying to say here of F. So D's coordinates we found earlier as minus 2 and 10. Okay, so minus 2 and 10. And then B's coordinates we found as 3 and 0. So we could go use the gradient formula. We could say 10 minus 0 over minus 2 minus 3. But yes, as expected, the answer is negative 2. And so that is how you would do that question though. So whenever they say average gradient, just use the gradient formula.